What's up guys, this is Soundwave Jordan here, we are back once again with some more gaming news. In today's gaming news, we are going to be discussing Darksiders 3, that's right guys, we are back once again with some more Darksiders 3 news, and today we are going to be talking about two different topics. The first topic, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about this earlier this week, but the first topic we are going to be discussing is the fact of how Darksiders 3 was able to happen, and how did it survive the remnants and the destruction of THQ, as you guys already know. THQ pretty much went through a, well, bit of trouble back in the past, and of course it went through bankruptcy, leaving Darksiders in a limbo state. It's back alive and up and running, and as you guys already know, it's already in development right now. We've seen gameplay, and most of the game community is excited for this game because, well, it's pretty much going to be closing and finishing up the story, and many people have been left in a huge cliffhanger wondering what's going to be happening. And the second topic, of course, we are going to be talking about is the fact that we are going to be learning a bit more about the gameplay elements that are going to be set in Darksiders 3. So, you know, I'm here to share with you guys. I'm here to break it down with you guys. And, you know, we're going to be talking about things. And I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on how I feel on each of these things. So we're going to start off with the first topic, as I mentioned. I'm pretty sure you guys are always wondering, how did Darksiders 3 end up happening? How did it manage to survive the bankruptcy of THQ? Well, guys... I'm here to share with you guys right now because due to an article I read recently and due to what IGN stated in their IGN first initiative with Darksiders 3, they've been pretty much telling us that Darksiders 3 wasn't an easy thing to happen because as you guys already know, THK went through bankruptcy. So, you know, I'm going to give you guys a brand just a bit right now. Now, as you guys already know, following its grand reveal earlier this month, Darksiders 3 has become the focus of this month's IGN's first initiative. Starting off the series with a brief history of Darksiders 3, developer Gunfire Games have discussed their desire to give the franchise the finale it truly deserves. So pretty much it tells us that the Gunfire Games, which are ex-developers of visual games, at least most of them are, they want to finish the story of Darksiders, in which I agree because if you guys think about it right now, Darksiders, the story is not finished at all. The game, it hasn't been solved. The closure, we have no closure with this game. I mean, at the end of Darksiders 1, we have a huge cliffhanger where you see the other three horsemen, Fury, Strife, and Death, coming down onto the Armageddon of Earth. And at the end of Darksiders 2, well, Death does something, I can't remember exactly, but pretty much it left, up, it left us at a cliffhanger. In Darksiders 3, well, we're going to be playing on Fury's story, and Fury is tasked to capture or kill off the seven deadly sins. And, you know, pretty much... It all leads into the ending of Darksiders 1 because they're going to be working together and pretty much everyone wants a final game where you play as all of the horsemen. And of course, I wouldn't, I, I obviously want that. I obviously want that. That would be so freaking awesome playing as all of the horsemen from Darksiders. Holy, that's insane. And switching up between each of them, it's what most of the gaming community wants and Hopefully it may happen in the future, but as you guys already know, that depends on the success of Darksiders 3. But I do believe that it's going to be successful due to the fact that it has a lot of hype behind it, as well as you have passionate developers such as Gunfire Games working on it. So, yeah. <clears throat> To continue on with the article, the actual formation of Gunfire Games come from a series of unhappy circumstances brought by THQ's bankruptcy back in 2012. According to lead level designer Richard Vorady, there were some false positives along the way to Darksiders 3, due in part to the team thinking that the success of Darksiders 2 would ensure their purchase once THQ went belly up. Shocked by the lack of a buyer, Video Games was forced to close up shop and the Darksiders franchise was left in limbo. With some Video Games team members going to pre-existing studios and others going to form Airship Syndicate with Darksiders creative director Joe Madura, remaining members of the Darksiders team came together to form Gunfire Games. While it wasn't their primary focus, the thought of doing another Darksiders was always in the back of their heads of Gunfire Games team. When THQ Nordic eventually acquired the Darksiders franchise and then approached the team about finishing the series, it was an offer they could not refuse. They personally said that it felt like unfinished business, and of course they wanted to, of course, finish off the series as it should have been done a long time ago. And I'm pretty darn happy about it, so that's pretty much the gist of Darksiders 3 surviving a, you know, horrible fate, because as you guys already know, THQ... I, I, I honestly like some of their games. I mean, some of their games, at least most of their games, at least in my opinion, it was a, uh, they were a bit mediocre. Well, most of them are mediocre, but Darksiders were one of the few games, well, few franchises where it was actually above average. And 
it was just sad to know that Darksiders was a game that had to suffer a horrible fate due to THQ's bankruptcy, but I'm glad to know that it is back and it's finally going to be coming back with a powerful force because, like I told you guys, we have some passionate developers working on this game and they really want this game to be extremely successful so they can actually finish off the story of the Darksiders franchise. So pretty much that's just the gist of it right there. Um, as the article states, and I continue on with it, Legacy is not important for Gunfire Games. They are more concerned with putting this entry in the series out without damaging anything else and potentially setting up the next one. If they can leave Darksiders in a better state than when they found it, they will have their job done. So pretty much that just goes to show you that they actually care about this franchise and they're willing to do whatever means necessary to make sure it has a proper ending to its story and proper closure to the fans, which includes us. So. Yeah, it's actually it's actually a humble story because, you know, we all care about this franchise. We care about it so much. It just so happens that it was part of a series of unfortunate events. So, you know, I'm glad to know it's coming back. But that's pretty much the first topic right there. I want to show you guys how Darksiders survived the bankruptcy. And we are going to be going on to the second topic, which is more gameplay elements to be discussed regarding Darksiders 3. So let's actually go on to that right now, shall we? Now that we're here with the second topic of Darksiders 3, we are going to be discussing the gameplay elements as I mentioned before. Now I got this information from an IGN article where it was talking about everything you need to know about Fury, which was similar to the video I did not too long ago. If you guys would like to check that out, I will leave a link at the end of the video so you guys will be able to see it for yourselves. But that's not what's important. What's important right now is the fact that we are going to be talking about the gameplay elements of this game. Now, as you guys already know and saw some of the gameplay that was, you know, revealed last week, we saw that Darksiders 3 overall felt a bit slower, a bit, you know, slow paced and all of that and everything along those lines. However, there's reasoning behind that. Now, Gunfire Games, which is ex vigil game members, they were telling us that the only reason the game actually feels that way or pretty much is going to be that way is the fact that it's going to be based upon character. Now, war and, you know, death they're pretty much agile they're fast however fury on the other hand she's more of a elegant type of individual especially when she comes to fight her enemies a great comparison in fact was the fact that fury knowing that she has a whip actually fights like catwoman similar to how catwoman fought in the batman arkham games as you guys already know Catwoman, she was graceful and, you know, did some elegant cartwheels and elegant dodges and all of that. Well, pretty much Fury is going to be operating the same way. She's not going to be, she's not going to be doing strafes. She's not going to be doing dodges, nothing like that. She's going to be doing elegant cartwheels to dodge her, you know, attacks from the enemies and all of that. So I got, I got to say, I find that pretty darn interesting. And, you know, it's a really great way to tackle the personality of Fury because since she's the only female, of course, she's not going to be fighting like death or war and all of that she's going to be fighting in her own type of way which is handling her whip and of course using her whip in her specific way or her favorite way or whatever you guys like to call it but pretty much i gotta say that's pretty darn awesome another thing that was mentioned was the fact that darksiders 3 is going to be a bit more difficult when handling multiple enemies as you guys already know in the darksiders franchise whenever you played as war or death and there were a whole group of enemies all you had to do was go in there and just start beating people up well that's not going to be happening as easily as it is going to be in Darksiders 3. In Darksiders 3, they mentioned that if you attempt to do that, you're going to have to think smart about it because Fury doesn't fight like that. She fights a bit different from war and death, and of course, she's going to be doing things strategically, especially with her whip. So that is something to take into consideration, knowing that when you take on multiple enemies, it's going to be a lot more difficult. So, you know, a good similarity that the IGN article brought up was the fact that it's going to be similar to the Dark Souls franchise. As you guys already know, when fighting enemies in the Dark Souls franchise, there's a series of dodges, strafes, and all of that. But we are going to be experiencing that with Darksiders 3. However, we are going to see cartwheels and, you know, little elegant dashes instead of these rush tactics that war and death are familiar with so i like the fact they're actually you know putting her personality into the gameplay because i feel like that's extremely important and what makes that important is the fact that you actually want to feel like one of the horsemen of the apocalypse and doing so of course makes you feel freaking awesome so pretty much that's just the gist of it right there another thing that was noted in the article was the fact that they pretty much stated that fury's hair is somewhat alive 
Um, her hair is going to have different reactions from whenever you use spells or use your magic. Her hair is going to be going crazy, especially when you're fighting, because when you're fighting, it's going to be, you know, acting similar to fire and all that. And I got to say, that's pretty darn awesome. But pretty much um, that's all the information regarding theory and, you know, the gameplay elements and the history of the Darksiders 3 franchise. Um, it's pretty darn awesome. And I got to say, I'm very impressed. It makes me look forward to this game even more. And I gotta say that the fact that they're actually putting her personality into the gameplay as well, you know, it makes me pretty darn excited for it and it makes me happy to know that they actually care for the franchise instead of just slapping on another hack and slash engine and trying to make it Dark Side of Street. So, yeah. But that's all I would say for today's video though, guys. Um, there isn't much to be said. I gave you guys the gameplay elements, some things about Fury, as well as the history and how Darksiders 3 happened. So I hope you guys enjoyed my video regarding Darksiders 3. Of course, I will be here giving you guys all information and news regarding this game. And of course, I will be giving you guys my opinions and thoughts. So with that being said though, guys, that's all I would say for today's video. If you guys would like to leave a like, comment or subscribe for like you enjoy my content and will enjoy any other future things regarding dark siders 3 i will leave all links inside the description as well as my twitter if you guys like to leave a follow with that being said though guys thank you guys for watching nonetheless this is sound jordan here peace late and see you guys in the next dark siders 3 video i'm out to have a lovely awesome split